G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I'm talking about propellers today because everybody wants to know what's the best propeller to use, especially now that mini quads are becoming all the rage. But what I'm going to talk about here covers fixed wing as well. Anything that has a propeller on it, you can hopefully learn something from this. Now here's a conventional regular two-bladed propeller. These are the ones that we all used to use when we first got mini quads. They were cheap, they were light, um, they weren't very tough, but they worked. You know, they worked reasonably well. And with our tiny little 1806 motors and our 12 amp ESCs and our three cell batteries, these were all we needed to get the kind of performance that scared us way back then. Of course, these days, you know, this is pretty old hat. This is pretty pedestrian in terms of uh, performance. And what happened was, of course, people wanted to get more power out of their mini quads, more thrust. And to do that, they went to bullnose propellers. And would you believe it? I had one here that I was going to demonstrate and I've just lost it. So here we go. Here, this one will do. This is a bullnose propeller. It's the same diameter. This is the Gem fan one, the black one. Same diameter, but notice it's got a lot more blade area. If I put one over the other, you can see that there's a significant increase in area, if I can get them lined up, excuse me, and this is probably out of focus, but there's a lot more area on the on the bull, bullnose prop, and also the tips are wider. If we put the tips side by side, you can see that the, the tip for the bullnose is wider than the tip for the old propeller. And that gave us more thrust, because more blade area means more grip on the air. These, a blade, a propeller blade, is a wing. So, you know, the bigger the wing, the more lift you get on an aircraft. So the bigger the propeller blade, the more lift you get from the propeller. And in the case of a propeller, lift is thrust. So these props gave us heaps of thrust, but there was a penalty to pay. Um, if you've watched my video on how ducting improves the performance of a propeller, you'll understand why. If you haven't watched it, then there's a link in the description of this video. Go and click on it and you'll find out. The thing to notice is that these have broader tips and that means a bigger tip vortex, more drag from these wide tips which means that although we're getting more power out of, more thrust out of our quad, we're also not as efficient. And it's worth mentioning how electric motors work at this stage because you might think, well, how do you get more power out of a given motor ESC and battery? Well, you load it up more. The more load you put on an electric motor, the more current it will draw. And for a given voltage, the more current you're drawing means the more watts are going into the motor. The more watts that go in, the more power you've got. So the more you can load up an electric motor, the more power you're going to get. These props didn't represent very much of a load with their skinny little blades. These props, more of a load. So we're getting more wattage going into our motor. We're getting more thrust coming out. And so that was fine. We all flew bullnose props for a while and it was great and everyone was happy and we're impressed with the punch out, although our battery life did suffer. You didn't get nearly so long flight times. And then people decided, hmm, we want more power. And you can put a bigger motor on. You can go from a 2204 to a 2206. But if you're using the same propeller, you're not going to get much more thrust because you're not loading up that bigger motor. The bigger motor has the potential to deliver more power, but without a load on it, it's not going to. So that's when they decided, hey, let's go for three bladed props. There you go. Look at that. How does this work? Well, three wings produce more lift than two wings. So we're getting more grip on the air. We're getting more thrust from a three bladed prop. And so we got more thrust and three bladers are very popular on quads and mini quads right now because they give you much more punch. If you nail the throttle it will accelerate far more quickly because it's got more grip, there's less prop spin, there's less slippage in the air and they'll, that means they'll give you really good cornering. If you're racing um, or I'm doing freestyle you can do much tighter maneuvers, you can get around the corners more quickly, you can drop from a greater height and recover at a much lower altitude because you've got more thrust there to arrest your descent. Makes flying a lot more fun but again now we've got three tips, so we're going to have reduced efficiencies. There's a bit of a caveat on that. Let's look at the bullnose prop. The tip on the bullnose is quite flat. In fact, I've got a bit of bullnose somewhere, which I lost. And I'll see if I can find it. I don't know. Where did that go? Oh, here it is. Don't worry. The bench reveals all. Look at the tips on that. That's a, a real bullnose prop. Big, flat, broad tip. Massive tip vortexes, massive drag, massive inefficiency. Compare it to this prop. This has got kind of a... Um, a swept tip and in theory this will have less drag so it may be that a well-designed three-bladed prop will give you as much thrust without suffering any extra performance penalty over a two-bladed bullnose because although you've got more tips the tips themselves may be more efficient yeah, so you think hey that's great and people did that for a while and thought whoa we've got three-bladed props we're getting more thrust but then they decided hey we need more thrust what do we do well 
obviously what you do is you use bullnose three-bladed props. There you go, you have the, see the difference in the tip design, it's a much blunter, broader tip, so therefore you're getting more grip on the air again, you're putting more load on the motor, but you're losing efficiency. So the, the bullnose three-blade is really inefficient, but it does have a fantastic amount of thrust, fantastic amount of grip on the air, and as a result, if all you're looking for is raw power, this is going to deliver. This is going to deliver in droves. But wouldn't you know it, still people weren't satisfied. And they said, we want even more power out of our mini quad motors and out of our, out of our motors. So that's when, and I don't have one unfortunately, four bladers came in. This is a four blader off a scale fixed wing model. But you can see, let me just pull out a little bit here because it's quite important to, to see what I'm talking about. Obviously, it's got four tips. It's got twice as many tips as a two blader. That means twice as much tip vortex. Less efficient again. But man, you've got so much grip on the air with one of these that you're going to get a lot of power out of your motors. And that's the way we've been going. Increased number of blades to get increased amount of grip on the air, increased load on the motor, which means the motor is going to put more power out because it's going to draw more current from the ESCs. It's kind of a, you know, amazing little connection. So there you go. So now a lot of quad flyers are using four bladed props. And of course, they're not getting quite the flight times they used to if they're hammering it because the batteries only have so much energy. And you notice this is, as I say, this is off a fixed wing aircraft. Why did fixed wing aircraft go to multi bladed props? Well, not all of them have. If you look at your average, you know, small light aircraft Cessna 172, whatever, they generally tend to run a two bladed prop. That's for efficiency reasons. Obviously, as I said, the two bladed prop is the most efficient setup normally found uh, because it only has two tips and it can be made long and thin. And if you've got the room, if you, if you can put a bla two bladed prop on that's big enough without hitting a frame or hitting the ground in the case of a full size aircraft when it's taxiing along, then you get maximum efficiency. But towards the end of the Second World War, it was discovered that they, the engines, the Allison and the Rolls Royce engines, were putting out so much power on things like the Spitfire and the uh, and the, what is it, the P-51 Mustang that without making the undercarriage legs really, really long, they couldn't get the motors, they couldn't load the motors up enough to stop them over revving. So that's why those later World War II fighters had four bladed and sometimes five bladed props just to get enough load on the motor to stop it over revving because those motors were so powerful. And that's the same problem we've got with our mini quads due to the fact that we've got a frame with standoffs. We can't just put bigger and bigger props on, we have to actually use more blades to get more grip on the air, which is the strategy we've gone for. So coming up shortly on RC Model Reviews, I'm going to be putting all these props to the test. And we can test them on the test bench, that's fine, but I want to see how they work in the air because there are a whole lot of factors. As I say, let's look at the factors involved in a good prop. You've got the number of blades, it can be two, three, four, and just as a matter of interest, yes, there are one-bladed props. There are props that only have one blade. On the other side, they have a weight, a counterweight, so they balance. And these used to be used a lot in some forms of error modeling, such as control line speed, where you want maximum efficiency to get maximum speed. The, a lot of the old control line speed models had a single monoprop, monobladed prop with a weight on the other side. But we don't see those much anymore because they have other issues, such as dynamic balance and offset thrust and things. So I'm not going to go into that. But suffice to say, yes, the most efficient prop is a one bladed prop. But it's far more practical to use two blades because just having one blade doesn't reduce the size of your prop disc, it doesn't reduce the amount of clearance you need, so unless you want absolute maximum efficiency, two bladers work better, or, you know, more practical to use. Anyway, getting back to our collection of props here, we'll be looking at the number of blades, we'll be looking at things like tip shape, because tip shape has a huge bearing on the performance of a prop, because this is the bit that's moving most quickly, so if it's not designed properly, any drag it produces will have a really, really noticeable effect because of the speed with which it's moving through the air. It's furthest from the thing. Also, this is because it's moving quickly, it's the bit that can, has the potential to generate the most lift. So if that's not designed properly, you waste a lot of your performance because you've, you know, haven't got a good lift coming from that area of the propeller. Other things are the durability of the prop. Obviously, are these things, do they stand up to a crash? Some do, some don't. The balance, is the balance good? The consistency, um, are, the, are the props that come out th off the assembly line all the same consistency or some good, some bad? And there's the efficiency and the total thrust produced. And they're two different figures because some props will produce a lot of thrust but they're horrendously inefficient, which means you may get a really good flight for a minute or so and then your battery's flat and it's no fun. So we're going to do some tests, we're going to compare all the things. And this is what I'm thinking I might be doing for the testing. To find out which is the fastest props, I'm going to use the same mini quad frame I'm going to fit it up with the different props and we're going to fly a fixed length course. There'll be two markers on the ground. I will fly as fast as I can between the two markers and we'll compare the performance of the different props over that particular time 
test to get the maximum speed. It'd be very interesting to see. That's one test. The next test will be thrust. Thrust doesn't always equal speed because props are a form of gearing. And one of the factors we haven't talked about is the angle of those blades, the pitch. The steeper the angle, the greater the pitch. And that means that the more load it puts on the motor and the, effectively the more air it moves, but, but the less efficient it is at low airspeed because eventually you can imagine if we increase the angle of those blades at some point they'll stall just like a wing would stall because remember these are just a wing so if we have too much pitch on a prop it stalls and operates very inefficiently at low speeds such as when you're hovering or you're trying to punch out of a corner so if you have too much pitch your prop's going to make a lot of noise but it's not going to work very well that's why you know, we have gone for larger blade areas rather than increasing pitch in many cases uh, no one wants a prop that just stalls in the corners it's kind of like trying to run a uh, race in top gear. If you can't change down to a lower gear for the corners, your performance will be very poor. So we're going to do the time trial, the speed test with a mini quad, the same quad, same motors, same battery, same ESC, uh, with all the different props, see how it fares. Then I'm going to look at the thrust test, and that's important. I'm going to do a punch out to a height of, you know, maybe 100 or 150 feet. And I'll be using, I won't be using a telemetry or a barometer to measure that because the, the latency is too great. It'll be done optically. We'll measure the height to 100 feet and we'll punch from the ground to 100 feet and see just how quickly the same quad with the same motor, ESCs, etc., reaches that altitude. And of course, it won't be at full speed. So it's not a measure of speed. It's a measure of raw thrust and performance. That'll be a really interesting one as well. And probably for durability, I'll just fly like I usually do, which means they'll all break. It's not a problem. But that's what we plan to do with the props. Now, I've got props from Gemfan, I've got props from DYS, I've got props from DAL. We're going to throw them all in the mix, and we're going to see what happens. Someone mentioned King Kong props. I've got some King Kong props too, so we'll try those as well, because they seem to be very, very low cost. They seem to be quite durable, but do they perform? We'll find out. So there you go. That's my little video on props. Stay tuned. As I say, look at that video on the effect of ducting and props, and it'll give you a better understanding of these tips and what happens when you've got too many of them and they're the wrong shape. So thank you for watching, and I will now get back to the bench. Bye for now.